Welcome to the Warbird Mistress. This is London Calling. Welcome. Today's date is Wednesday, 10 July 1940. It has been rainy all day throughout England, with showers stronger over Kent and Sussex, and this is a review of the day's happenings. The dreariness of the day did not keep the Germans from keeping focused on disrupting channel traffic as strikes against the merchant fleet at sea and in port continue. This morning, heading westbound into the Thames estuary, Convoy Bread was spotted by Dornier 17 and her BF-109 escorts off the North Foreland at 1100 hours. Six Spits from No. 74 Squadron were scrambled out of Hornchurch and successfully damaged the offending Dornier. However, before disengaging, two of the Spitfires were damaged by Messerschmitts of the first group uh, JG-51 and forced to make emergency landings. For Jerry's part, a fighter sweep was launched to clear the way for the upcoming strike. At 11.30, over Dover, patrolling Spitfires from Biggin Hill No. 610 Squadron had a dogfight with between nine and a dozen BF-109s. Though our boys claimed no victories, they did suffer one Spitfire damage and forced down, crash landing at Hawkins just before noon. The airframe was reparable and the pilot was safe. Having been alerted to the convoy, 1st KG-2 sent 26 Dorniers to intercept our ships. Heavily escorted by the full complement of ZG-26's 1st Groupers, Messerschmitt 110s flying with the bombers, and a high-altitude loose escort of BF-109s from both 3 JG-51 and 2 Staffeln from the newly arrived 3rd Jagdgeschwader's 1st Grouper. In response to the activities of the day, at 1315, No. 32 Squadron was launched to keep a combat air patrol of hurricanes over the estuary. Upon spotting the incoming raid of nearly 100 aircraft, the rest of No. 32 Squadron was launched together with the hurricanes from No. 56 and 111 Squadrons, as well as No. 74 Squadron Spitfires. Within a half hour, a fierce fight had broken out over Kent. Our boys struggled to get the bombers as they were kept at bay by the BF-109s assigned to keep a loose patrol well overhead and to harass any potential interceptors. A half-dozen Spitfires from No. 64 Squadron were diverted from their regular patrol over the countryside to serve as reinforcements. While the radio chatter was too intense over the wireless for the interceptors to coordinate their attacks, and this was for many, if not most, of the pilots their first time facing Battleheart and Jerry, we did get to claim victories. Despite the odds and the unfriendly weather, our boys disrupted the thundering Huns from proceeding with their attack and kept convoy bred relatively safe. No. 64 Squadron managed to catch the Germans on retreat and continued to harass the broken-up formations of bombers and fighters as far as the French coast. For their efforts, they claimed one Messerschmitt 110. No. 56 Squadron also claimed a 110. 111 Squadron claimed a DO-17, while 32 Squadron claimed two, and 66 Squadron claimed one. Two JG-3 lost one BF-109, as did two JG-51. In total, 14 German aircraft and 29 aircrew and pilots were lost, and one was rescued by St. Otif uh, AG-59 in the channel. The Germans had no air victories, but did sink the Royal Dutch steamship Bill S. A small steamer was the only loss from CW-3, Convoy Bread. Unfortunately, this was not the only German strike. Uncontested over many parts of Britain, Göring's Luftwaffe struck at Falmouth with U-88 striking ships in harbour. Their main targets seemed to be the tanker Tuscaloosa and the steamer Waterloo, which was sunk. The Greek Mari Chandris, a steamer, was damaged while the convoy HG-33 last month and being repaired in port. She was set ablaze when the fire aboard Tuscaloosa spread to her decks. Chancellor was also damaged, however the bombers attacking the 7,000-ton tanker managed to sink the Zwarte Zee, the Dutch salvage tug alongside her, as the bomb splinters and the shock waves of near misses tore through her hull. In the air... Britain counts two aircraft and two airmen lost. Flight Officer Thomas Peter Kingsland Higgs of Oldham, Lancashire, and formerly of the University Air Squadron, having read modern history at Merton, was killed colliding with the DO-17. Assigned to 111 Squadron, he is the first fighter pilot to be lost in combat in this Battle of Britain. Flying Hurricane P-3671, 6,000 feet above deck, he had shot down one BF-109 and was evading the fire of Oberleutnant Wouter Uzo's 109 when he collided with the 17, shearing off his wing and likely downing the bomber. Though he bailed out clean, rescue launches could not find him. 
His body would wash ashore at Nordvik in the Netherlands on 15 August. The first loss of the Battle of Britain did not, however, occur in the field of battle. That unfortunate honor goes to Sergeant Ian Clenshaw of the Royal Air Force Volunteer Reserve, serving with 253 Squadron at Curtin and Lindsay, Lincolnshire, flying a dawn patrol in Hurricane P-3359. He lost control and crashed on the coast near the Humber. He was killed on impact. That is all for this evening. Thank you, and good night. Thank you for tuning in to the Warbird Mistress. This is London Calling, a day-by-day -day detail of the Battle of Britain, and I hope that you subscribe, watch the playlist for new editions, and do check out other offerings on this channel. Subscriptions through Patreon and YouTube are more than welcome to keep this channel going. Thank you and take care.